Hello and welcome back to Reaching for Petals with me, Barden. We're on to chapter three now, and I'm very interested to see where Emerging we're going to go from here. from the depths of remembrance, a new serenity seeps forth into vision. Glistening in the distance, the overbearing copper orb begins to set its wavering mind. We are closer now than ever before to the persevering peak, a place we too will find our home to dream. A restful sleep is the ultimate reward for those embroidered in tumultuous turmoil. At least for this moment, there is nothing left but to close the lying eyes and open the wandering wisdom of uninterrupted thought. At this moment of utter twilight, the veil of truth and falsity Relinquishes its nature of the opaque. I like um, that it's very autumnal here. You know, we got um, we talked about the, the copper um, orb as in being the setting sun, but we've also got a, a lot of coppers in um, the landscape as well, but, um, like a lot of kind of falling leaves. Some of them change color. Now we've got um, another log here. Okay, so we can tip that over. Close we have to be. Oh, we have to walk. Oh, there we go. You know, we have to um, press E there, just have to walk into it. If I could live somewhere like this and have like really good internet and be able to get all of the uh, different types of food I wanted, I would. But that's the thing, isn't it? That um, you either go for the, the beautiful scenery and the seclusion or um, you can have your modern conveniences. I know with um, kind of with drones and stuff, uh, it may change in the future where they'll be able to deliver anything anywhere. Uh, but that's a bit off. Not so distant geography. The source of the mountain streams fulfills a vast pool of hopes and dreams. Lotus petal along the outskirts of the seams, dancing and pooling together, making their leave one after another in an endless cavalcade of organic staccato. Memories of the truth contort into beautification of reality. Many, what once was, is not life's faithful occurrence due to whatever conventions of one's conviction. These trusted falsifications establish a history, both honest and maligned. But whichever of these creates the further benefit will stand the test of time. Can it be that actuality can be erased through the complexity of memory. It's a very beautiful scene here. There, there's a lake like this, um, not far. Well, when I say in, in terms of the distance in Ireland, like nothing's far, but uh, not too far from my home. Like it's about maybe. An hour's drive and um, it's in Wicklow and it's up in the Dublin mountains and it's called Glendalough and it's very famous in Ireland it's very famous it's very beautiful as well and kind of up around the area you've got places like Sally's Gap and um, the Hellfire Club and lots of other places that um, they're kind of like people in Ireland would remember especially from their childhood going for trips places like that and there's other parts where in the mountains you can go for drives and things like that as well. So this this kind of reminds me of that. Back when before kind of the Irish people before they were Catholic, 
um, or a Christian, because obviously Christianity came before the schism and Catholic and Protestant. But um, before Irish people were were um, Christian, we were we worship we worship nature, and we didn't actually settle anywhere. We we're kind of a, a nomadic people. We were hunter gatherers, and because of that, it meant that. Um, almost the whole of Ireland was just one massive forest and there were no permanent settlements. There were only kind of uh, like temporary settlements as as the people moved to different hunting, er hunting areas with the seasons and stuff like that. Um, and then, so now because of, you know, civilization coming to Ireland, there's very little of that um, ancient forest left. And I, it's it's kind of sad, but at the same time, um, you know, I probably wouldn't exist <laughs> if time had stood still like that. But it's, again, it's it's what I was talking about earlier about trying to have like this kind of untouched beauty, but still having like your modern um, amenities. And it's it's very like I don't think our our civilization now would be able to solve that, but maybe sometime in the future, there would be, um, you know, some kind of descendants of humanity who can figure out how to how to do that, how to have, you know, this kind of beauty, natural beauty, not kind of man-made beauty, and have A all second of the sighting of oh. a familiar phantom brings peace to my frantic thinking soul. Drawing water from the acquiring aquifer is none other than the rehabilitating reason for this vigorous venture. Her beauty reflects perfectly in the hopeful spring. The lotus flowers tell tales of majesty all to her touch. Ah, nice. And again, the, the music fits very well with the, the scenery. So, you know, even if you don't um, get this game, you maybe should consider getting the uh, getting the, the music track. I'm, I'm pretty much made up my mind now that I'm going to get it. And it might be something that I listen to when I uh, when I'm editing videos or Maybe not editing because when I'm editing videos, obviously I have to listen to sound. But when when I'm rendering videos, um, maybe I'm not doing anything else, or maybe I'm reading at the same time. I might have it on in the background. There's a lot of the time when I render, I either watch um, YouTube videos from some of my YouTube friends, the likes of um, More Jacks, Braskus, Taff and Lum, Game Night, um, David is trying. Um, and Ryan as well. Like those guys kind of watch their videos as my own videos are rendering. Or I um or I listen to music and read. Who's that person gone? Petals may fall from the flowers they form. Their freedom fastens onto my fleeting and faltering feelings. A living touch only surpasses her loving love. Something more easily dreamt in a world no longer to be attained. I want to go back here for a second. There was someone standing over there and they're gone. As soon as I went around the tree. Because I was going to... I was... Um, I wanted to finish what I was talking about and then I was going to mention them. I'm sure you saw it as well. So I want to go over here and see what significance that actually has. There's some standing just up here. 
or certainly looked like a person. You see all the petals uh, folding down as well. Okay, let's um, push on. The water there in the waterfall um, doesn't look the best, but I would say that's to do with uh, me ha having it on medium settings rather than um, anything to do with the game. Probably someone who has a rig that can play this at full settings, it, the waterfall probably looks beautiful for them. Okay, let's uh, press on. Okay, so we've got a way across there. It's almost certainly where we have to go because that area there is all blocked. Sun has only begun its arc into descendants. Before the night sets in, memories regain momentum, dreams and their happenings fade into existence. Love and loss are among the most famous feelings in the moments of increasing dusk. There is still a sweetness to be felt. Light is still prevailing. For now, only somber moments take the stage. There is no stopping the prominence of these emotions. In the same way, there is no impeding the beginning of a new day. But in the sunlight, however faint, there is still time to make a change. A difference to keep the night from overlapping the glory of the nearest star. Accept that the feelings of loss and loneliness exist to promote the endearing experience gathered from fate's finer finishes. Okay, so... He's talking about loss and loneliness, so I guess at some stage we must have lost Renee, and this walk must be some kind of significance to um, to our relationship. But one thing I was going to say as well is that he was talking about the setting sun, and um, I saw a very interesting fact. Um, anyone who's uh, from the UK will be familiar with a, a TV show called. Uh, QI, which sounds quite interesting, and it's or it was, um, it was hosted by Stephen Fry, who's a really clever guy. And one of the things that he was explaining on there, one of the quite interesting facts was um, that when you when you look to the horizon and you see the setting sun, and the sun is just above the horizon, um, the sun has actually set and it's no longer there. And the setting sun that we see is an optical illusion. Because of the curvature of the Earth, the sun has already dipped down below the horizon. And we can't actually see it, but our brains, um, our brains can't process that thought. So we still see a setting sun, which is, you know, it's crazy to, to think that, like, Obviously, there's science behind why that is, but um, when your brain is just trying to get get ar it's you know get around the fact that it's there but it's not there, but you can see it with your eyes. So it's 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 a bit um, it really does kind of mess with your mind. But that's the great thing about science is that it's able to explain things like that without kind of. You know, some people say like science kind of strips away the magic of things, but as well, like if you kind of, um, science can, can point out a lot of the beauty and the magic in in nature as well. Because uh, if, people, if people didn't study a lot of, you know, if scientists didn't study a lot of nature, then there's a lot of things that um, we know about now that only for their studying them that we wouldn't know about, so. I'm definitely in the, the science camp on things like that. Okay, now, let's make sure that we don't die. 
So we're on the far land there, so where am I supposed to go? I'm supposed to I don't kill this tree either. But let's see. I don't think no. It wouldn't make sense to me that we would be able to push over that tree. So there's nothing over there. So we do jump. I'm not sure whether I guess I'm gonna have to try run and jump so shift is normally run. So let's hope that shift is run in this game as well. Let's get ourselves kind of lined up there. Okay. And then run and jump. Okay. Oh no, we fell to our death. Oh, hang on, we're bunging. Why are we bunging? So, what the hell happened there? So we did a bungee jump, okay. And I got an achievement for it as well. <laughs> to lose something is to lose a piece of oneself. No matter the prominence, regardless of the moment, pieces of persona are left behind. And like the endearing oak, one must persevere the current that life forces us all into. The gifts given unto us are stolen without repair. But in the end, they are gifts and only alive for a fleeting time. Like everything else in this world, the endless river of time flows into the ocean of eternity. All things are caught in the tide of time makes no difference. We alone are mere droplets, countless fragments. But together, we circulate humanity's cycle of joy, pain, gain, and loss. Yeah, it's very true that um, as I was talking about in the last video as well, that uh, when you get kind of to my age, you realize how you kind of realize how short a life is. You know that uh, I'm I'm in in my early forties, and that means that you know if I'm lucky. Uh, what a journey oh. this has been to venture here to reach the highest peak at the end of the world. There is a softness to the ground here, unfelt in neither the wood the stone. The greenery that grows here is different near the lake. Everything upon this hill glows with such a sheen unseen by those unwilling or unable to take upon this quest of internal ascension. The fading light shimmers on the landscape as the sun glistens on the undersea wonders of this world. Wavering in and out, with the wind and the leaves. Breathing is heavy at first. Before the night's ocean overtakes one's vision and envelops the sky with something new, the day will soon be refreshed. But there is still much more to do before the dawn of the final day. Yeah, as I was saying, um, if I'm lucky, I'm about halfway through my allotted time um, here on the air. Now, I'm not sure whether that's the way we need to go. It's, no, it looks like there's a way maybe over here up the rocks. Yeah, let's go. Let's go back around this way. Or maybe we need to go this way to get up. Okay. Yeah, so you kind of. Um, like when you're younger, you know, you, you kind of think, yeah, like, wow, 80 years, that's a long time. But, um, when you kind of, when you use up like half of that, you kind of think, no, it's not that long actually. And, and you reach a certain age when years become like, years start to blur together as well. You know, like you you um you obviously witness um uh, things in life so we can't really 
Apparently we can't go up this way. I don't know why. It looks like a step, doesn't it? it looks like steps. The game's saying no, you can't. Yeah, but um, let's see if we can go up this way. Then. No. Yeah, like you, significant events happen, and you know, like say, um, world events or something like that. And then you hear about it being like the, the third anniversary or something. And in the, and in your head, you're thinking, hang on, I thought that happened this year or last year. Or, this doesn't look like the right place to go. No. Okay. So where are we supposed to go? Like up there, up this way, looks like. Maybe you have to go um, a little bit more to the left there and go this way instead. You do kind of get stuck on things a bit in this game as well. Obviously you wouldn't be, oh, we can't even go that way. Hang on, we've all these flowers here. Have we found another memory? Oh, we have, okay. That's why we think, oh, I need to go further on. But no, the memory is here. You have to reach for the petals. You have to remember. Okay, let's see what's in this particular petal then. Right, so we're back in the living room. So what's open now? So that's still not open. I'd, I'd guess it's this, but apparently it's not. Okay. Better not be the same one again. No, it's not. Oh, the computer is open. Of course. Okay. So is it the computer? No, it's not. Is it the guitar? No, it's not. Now yeah, we're kind of stuck behind the guitar. What's that? What's that behind the curtain? Oh, it's just light. It looked like a piece of paper for a second. I don't think it's here. It's just, I think those plates are kind of coming in and out of existence. Okay, maybe we have to go back into the bedroom then. It's so normally when you get close to what it is. Look, it's nighttime there. Okay. Yeah, see, it's over there, it's not in there. So let's go check this out. Looks like a, um, an engagement ring. The truest beginning of, sorry, so this is called promise. The truest beginning of love starts at the end of all that came before. Not to be forgotten, but to be magnified into something entirely new. There is only one way to show such a feeling of devotion. Through a covenant of forever and always. Barely into adulthood, a perfect proportion a perfect proposition must be made. Nearly two decades have passed since your first meeting. The magnitude of your nearing decisions weigh heavily. Never once has something so small carried such gravity. You go for a walk with Renee down the trail you both journey through your in your youth. It has been many years at this point since the adventure has been undertaken. Life's many instances have kept the beloved from continuing further to the peak of the mountain. Okay, let's continue. It feels like the first time you have both walked through the endless trees engulfing the sky, but this venture is more important than any other before it except for the original outset. 
As the mountain comes into crystal view, you put your hand in your pocket and reach for a box. Brene has not yet noticed this. So she hasn't noticed, so I think we say nothing. And we just do what we were gonna planning to do. You were too nervous to ask Renee outright to marry you, so you both continue your trip with the box ring in hand. Renee walks ahead and reaches out to a limb to help her up to another level. She asks you for your hand for support. You place your hand with the ring in her hand and she loses her grip on the branch and falls over onto you. You are both bewildered by the important, but importantly unharmed. You both begin to look frantically in the leaves to find the ring that has fallen in the excitement until you both place your hands on the intended treasure. From the ring to each other's eyes, your new focus is a powerful embrace unlike the world has seen before. She says yes on the condition that you don't wait too long for the surprises next time. Okay, um, let's continue. You reminisce on the years long since past while lovingly holding one another. While walking further on the trail, Renee asks where to have the wedding. You say, why not at the top, while pointing to the everlasting peak. Such love as pure as this is often only dreamt about through words, craft or song. Not ever has something so true existed, but the world is a balanced place, a wonderfully dreadful, beautifully terrifying place. So this love, this forever after, would not go on the way it ought to have. The peak was never reached, only aspire until now. Okay, so that brings us to the end of chapter three. Um, I hope you're enjoying the series so far. And if you are, please consider sharing the video and hitting the like button because any support you can give um, my channel would be hugely appreciated. And with that said, I really do hope to see all of you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button there on the right and check out some other videos here on the left.